Today is November 5th, 2024, which in New York City and in the United States of America means it's election day. Since we moved here a year ago, the election campaign was already underway. It was full on. For the last year, the news cycle has been completely monopolized by the uh, presidential election. I tend to overconsume news and I find myself in these different patterns and you've probably seen it if you've watched this channel long enough during COVID and diff during different times, um, I kind of get sucked into the vortex. And um, today I am choosing to not do that. So it's, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to like not take in any news. There's no new information that's going to change anything at this point other than the final count. So I'm trying, trying, I'm really trying to not, you know, let news affect or distract me today. Um, it is a beautiful fall day. We're going to get outside later. So I'm just hoping that, um, that we can just have a nice fall day in New York, which is, you know, a pretty awesome thing to say. Dropped my son off at daycare this morning, came back, did my morning meetings, tidied up a little bit here, but it's gonna get really quiet in the afternoon because most people that I work with are gonna start taking the, the time off uh, in the afternoon that they need to go vote. I, however, will not be voting in this election. Uh, not by choice, it's just, you know, I happen to not be a citizen of this country, which makes me ineligible to vote. I got two more meetings I need to wrap up this morning before I expect it to just, you know, quiet down. Um, and then, uh, you know, maybe we'll go outside, enjoy the fall day. Like I said, I dropped my kid off at daycare. The afternoon should be quiet. Dog has been walked, which means I have the rare opportunity as both a dog father and the father of a human baby boy uh, to walk out the door without dog or baby and just enjoy uh, freedom for just a little bit. But, uh, but first, I got to jump into a couple quick meetings uh, and then we'll get out of here. forgot my sunglasses. If you do. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> you missed me? I was only gone for two seconds. It is an absolutely beautiful, perfect weather day here in New York City. It's fall. November. I can't believe this is November, um, but it's about, like I said, 23 degrees, I think. And uh, listen, the sun is shining, the sky is blue. Um, and the best part is, if you're not paying attention to the news, it's just a beautiful day and nothing else. Can you name everybody on this mural? I got Monsignor Romero, Oscar Romero, Salvadoran, up there. And then I've got Simon Bolivar back here. That's all I got. Um, if you can name the others, let me know in the comments because, uh, I cannot. You could have a coffee or you could have a cold oat milk masala chai. Love that. Um, I don't think <coughs> my wife's, um, South Asian family would appreciate how much I paid for chai just now, but it is what it is, man. It's, it's delicious. What you gonna do? Here in the East Village, it's one of my favorite spots, Kolkata Chai Co. It's, um, it's delicious. I also love, love, love the artwork they have on the wall there. Um, the word immigrant spelled out on the US map just reminds me, like JFK said, we are a nation of immigrants. Just about every single person in this country, citizen or otherwise, can trace back their lineage and was to an immigrant that came to this country at some point. So that may not be your people now, but they were your people at some point. Important for us to remember as a country, and I include myself in the US as a country, even though I'm a very, very recent immigrant to this country, that. We were all at one point or another immigrants. 
And at one point or another, our group, our family, our ancestors or whatever, were at one point discriminated against or just dealt with racism in this country, whether it was the Italians, the Puerto Ricans, now the Haitians. Maybe it's just an unfortunate rite of passage in America. We are the descendants of 40 million people who left other countries, other familiar scenes, to come here to the United States to build a new life, to make a new opportunity for themselves and their children. I think it is not a burden, but a privilege. Side note, jaywalking is now legal in New York City. Um, jaywalking was deemed illegal as part of a, originally like a propaganda campaign by the automotive industry to pretty much establish and assert that roads were for cars and not people. One of the things that often gets lost in like the very toxic rhetoric around immigration and border security um, is that one, all immigrants are emigrants, you know, and you know, you could be like, oh, yeah, that's just semantics. You're just saying the exact same thing, but there's the, the country you left and, and why you left and everything that you left behind, which I'm sure, which is never easy. Even for me, somebody who just immigrated to the United States, who emigrated from Canada, um, you know, I didn't leave any dramatic or dire circumstances back in Canada, but I came here for an opportunity because I saw my future options and the future options uh, and opportunities for my kid as brighter and more and, you know, just more options, more opportunities for him as he grows up. So, so we moved here. But in doing so, we left behind family, we left behind relationships, friends, you know, familiarity, a culture, all these things that we left behind to, to, to be here in New York City, even though it's very much the same, it was still, it's still difficult. It's still hard to leave behind family. It's still hard to leave behind a country that you, that you loved, that you grew up with. It's hard to, to feel like you're giving up and leaving. And you know, those are things that nobody ever talks about when you hear about somebody crossing the border legally or illegally. You know, that's a, that's a different argument. Um, I'm just talking about getting here, being here and wanting the opportunity. That's all anybody wants um, is an opportunity to work, to have dignity, to, you know, eat what they kill, so to speak, to, 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 to feel like my output, my effort, how much work I put in is gonna directly impact my, um, my success or failure. That it's up to me, that I can forge my own destiny. That, that through my own work, through my own hands, through my own skills, knowledge, experience, everything that I am, that I can make opportunities for myself. And you had to believe that that didn't exist where you lived before for you to leave everything, leave behind your family to come here. And you know, and that's coming from me who, again, didn't leave dramatic circumstances, but, you know, I was, this is also the second time that I'm an immigrant. My family left family, left El Salvador during a civil war. Their decision changed the entire trajectory of my life, of my sister's life. Um, it, it disconnected us from our extended family, from our grandparents, from our culture. Um, you know, it disconnected us a little bit from language. So you come here, you come to a new country, my parents, when they went to Canada, you know, you start to find a community. You start to discover and try to figure out, like, what does it mean to be me? What does it mean to be who I am? How can I, what can I preserve from where I'm from while also integrating and contributing to the culture here? Um, um, I was at a screening of, um, of a Martin Scorsese film in like a retrospective, one of his old films, Mean Streets. It might have been one of his first, if not his actual first film. And one of the things that he said that struck with me um, when he was thinking about, when he was talking about his early films and you know, the kind of themes and, and, and stuff that he would talk about, aside from you know, wise guy gangster movies, um, he talked about the immigrant experience. And at the time, it was probably the experience of his parents 
or his grandparents, but you know, people in his life who immigrated to this country. And he said that every immigrant, every group, every new group that com comes to this country or goes to a new country um, is confronted with this same question. Um, and it's, who are we in this country? Who are we as a group, as a people in this country? And it's, and it's a difficult question. It's, it's, it's very difficult, you know, and, it, and it's not a question that maybe you're ever going to answer. You're always kind of looking for self. I, you know, never felt like I really belonged, even in Canada, in Toronto, where I spent most of my life. Um, so now again in New York um, and being in the United States, like, you know, will I ever feel like I belong? Do I ever really, will I ever feel like I'm doing my best to, to integrate? I'm working hard. I'm trying to contribute, um, you know. Hopefully, maybe one day I'll be a citizen, and that's sort of another level of, of civic responsibility. Whether it was just about this election or just something broader that's happening in American culture, and actually it's not even American culture, it's happening in Canada, it's happening in Western Europe. Um, there's like heartbreaking stories of the way migrants are treated. Um, and these are people that had lives, people had families, people had people depending on them. Um, and I think all of that, all of that gets lost and reduced to, you know, whether or not there's a wall. I would just love to hear more empathy on behalf of migrants and immigrants um, all over the world. And, uh, and it just it breaks my heart the way, um, the way migrants are talked about, um, the way newcomers are talked about, the way they're demonized, vilified. Um, they're, they're just people, just like everyone else who have at one point decided they're going to make their way to the U.S. or to Canada or to Western Europe um, and take a big risk and gamble just for an opportunity. There was this moment in, uh, on Father's Day, actually. My wife booked us a brunch cruise around Manhattan, um, which was really nice. But then there's this moment where um, the boat is approaching the Statue of Liberty and I'm holding my son and I actually got really emotional because I'm looking out at the Statue of Liberty like maybe thousands and millions maybe even of people did before and just overwhelmed with, you know, joy, relief, sadness, fear, like did I make the right decision? Um, and just all of these emotions come flooding in and I just imagined that it was the same feeling that maybe Everybody that came to, this, to the U.S. through Ellis Island, seeing that statue at one point, felt. As an immigrant, I have to ask myself the question of what does it mean to be an American? Um, and I think uh, during an election time or during a... Uh, a time where you know you're exercising your democratic rights is probably a good time for everyone to sort of ask themselves that question. Um, you know, regardless of who you're voting for or who you're thinking about or how you skew ideologically or um, your experiences, just what is what does it mean to be an American? And um, you know, I, I am going to turn on the news at some point um, today, but it. it if I can avoid it, it probably won't be, I, I want to try to avoid it until, you know, much later in the evening, until at least maybe until polls close. Um, I want actual information and not like an endless punditry, um, which, which is frustrating. But anyway, um, yeah, I got to run into this meeting, put on the Champions League game, pick up my son, have dinner, have an evening, real life. Oh my God, I'm tired. Okay, let's go. Watch the security guards uh, in my building take down uh, the American flag. And tomorrow morning they'll put it back up. And take it down and put it back up. 
ultimately, life's gonna continue.